Welcome to the Lockdown Farm. I'm here with Christoph Horvath and we've been together 24-7 for the last, uh, <laughs> last three weeks. <laughs> if you wonder why we're sitting so awkwardly close, it's because I got some complaints about the sound and uh, so I brought some cables um, to help with the sound, but as you can see, the cables are very short. So uh, we're having to sit quite close to the camera. But anyway, we are here to talk to you today about the updates on the situation. Um, and mainly it's that, I think Spain was the first country, or probably the second country in Europe to go into lockdown. Mm. Um, it was followed by Italy, but now, in essence, the whole of Europe and the whole of the US, a lot of South America is all in lockdown. Um, and what this really means is that we can't go to, for, for us it means competitions have been cancelled and we can't go to uh, any of the gyms, which is why we are at the lockdown farm. Um, so we wanted to give you a little bit of an update on the new style of competitions that are starting to emerge. Uh, I think it was Rogue were the first to announce that they're no longer going to do a physical or a in in place event, mm. in place event, but they're going to be doing a online competition. We then had um, United in Movement, mm. which. In essence, it is, which um, comes from Live Loud and seems to have brought together all of the sanctioned events and a lot of the community doing an online event. And we also have now CrossFit have released, they're kind of doing um, an at-home online competition as well. Yes, and we also shouldn't forget that the first event that talked about hosting an online sanctional, including a ticket to the CrossFit Games, was the Italian showdown although they, they didn't fall through with that. There was something CrossFit. Um... Yeah, this, that's quite, actually quite interesting because then CrossFit denied them to have, um, or didn't deny the online competition, but denied a ticket to the games through mm -hmm. and online. But then a few weeks later, Rogue announced they're going online. Although we still don't know how the format is going to look like. Yeah. Is it going to be all inclusive or just the athletes that qualified already? But I assume if they denied the possibility from the Italian showdown to give a ticket through an online comp, they cannot just allow to rogue at this moment. And yeah. So we, we in um, the bubble that we're in on the lockdown farm, are kind of predicting that the, the 2020 season is just cancelled. You know, there's going to be we would I think we would rather see that the CrossFit Games is cancelled rather than it becomes an online competition I, I, although it's very sad y yes it, the reality seems like the word postpone comes up week after week after week but in reality uh, I mean we can just say that it is cancelled basically yeah. but I think because the event happens every year exactly it, it, you know, it's not really postponed, it is cancelled. Whereas, you know, the Olympics, you could argue, because it's four-year cycles, they're going to postpone it for two years. Mm. True, but realistically, I think we're looking at the 2020 season being, uh, it, it, you know, at least being changed drastically or mm. being completely removed. Well, as we talked about it, it is a possibility that mid-autumn, late-autumn, the sanctional season starts to kick off and events start to come back into place. But unless they shift the CrossFit Games date to a very late date yeah. this year, it's highly unlikely that it's going to happen, at least at an at event format, maybe in an online. Yeah, it's, I, no, no, I suppose from my perspective mm. at the moment, and obviously this, like more or less all our lives around evolve around going to a gym or um, being at some form of competition but I just feel you know the fact that they have cancelled major events like major sporting events that you know generate significant amounts of money the NFL NBA you know the PJ Tour 
that it, it makes it more justifiable in a way and more understandable if they did cancel the games and just be like, okay, 2020 was the COVID-19 pandemic. That's what happened. Yes, I agree. In the grand scheme of things, CrossFit is still a small or smaller organization compared to like the NBA or the NFL or the uh, sports being mentioned. So probably it is smart to follow uh, those bigger leagues, Mm. I imagine. But it does raise a lot of questions once we talk about will it happen online? Then will it be all inclusive? If it's all inclusive, will there be the same price verse? And even being inclusive or whatever, will it have the same price verse? Can you put it up for an online comp? And then the other question is, this was supposed to be the last year with Reebok. And then the question is, was the contract that we have no idea of was meant for 10 CrossFit games or was it until the year 2020? Right, so will it... Yeah, and I don't think there's any real precedent for, you know, this kind of pandemic for so many events to be cancelled. Um, for me, for me, it's actually about the, the title of being like the uh, the fittest on earth. So it's like, you know, so Fraser is obviously, you know, crazy statistic that for the last five years, he's not lost a live competition, which, mm. is, which in the sport is, is mind blowing with so much variance. Mm. Um, but say it goes online. And, you know, it is the CrossFit Games 2020. It's just an online version. You know, that person wins. You know, and Fre- or Fraser doesn't win, another person wins. It's like, for him not to get the opportunity to you go for that fifth victory, something that no one's done in history, kind of following on from Froning. And this is like, you know, like moving on from like 10 years since Froning did that. It's a significant amount of time. Or ten years total since we've had those those two guys um, mm. competing. It that would be the sad thing for me. It would be like hey, like the you kind of get the title as the fittest on earth, but you don't do it in the same format that's been held for the last have fifteen years or whatever it may be. And it will raise questions. It will, if it happens, it will be a polarizing yeah. event. Uh, for sure. Well. And you also know with the with the online qual- qualifiers we have, there it raises always so many questions. At the end of the day, most people do it at the comfort of their own gym or yeah. their own homes. And although you have to pass an online judges course, it will be the judge who will be standing next to you will be someone you know, a friend, a gym manager, someone you see on the regular they want you to succeed just as much as you want to. And I'm not accusing anyone of cheating or miscounting or this or that. We can all agree that an online competition, doing it from the comfort of your own space versus going to a live event somewhere outside of your comfort zone with different judges will be always different and should be way differently. Uh, and I think that, you know, even in sport, it's kind of accepted that some people do better at online qualifiers. Mm. And some people do better at live competition, and uh, and you know, and I think it's kind of becoming accepted that some people are just really good at qualifiers in their own gym, but they don't travel well to, or you know, for whatever reason they don't do well on the competition floor. But in essence, you know, CrossFit still is, an well, the sport of CrossFit isn't on the competition floor, not online. Sure. So we kind of everyone kind of feel. Well, I would say there's like agreement in the sense that you know. An online competition and a live competition, just of two very different entities. Yes. Although we can always bring an exception, just like Fraser mm. winning Open, Regionals and the Games, just like Froning did yeah. before. So there are the outliers and it most likely affects not the top 0.0.01%, but maybe below. But as you said, for Fraser as well, for his legacy, yeah. not being able to go for that fifth consecutive or going in a very different format might not be as satisfying or... Yeah, it takes something away from it, or at least from my perspective, like it's, it's, it's sad not to see him get that opportunity to mm, get the consecutive title. Um, however, 
you know, I think what a lot of people are starting to do is to, you know, we are in Spain ahead of the curve in the sense that this is, we're tomorrow we're on our third week of quarantine. Um, and the US came in maybe 10 days a week ago or so, mm. the UK, similar timing. Um, and what we started to see now is a big shift. So um, the first competition is this, what's titled United in Movement. Um, and a lot of the online competitions are doing stuff to support the local CrossFit, your global CrossFit community, um, giving to charities, which I think are really nice incentives. Mm. And I, I'm, I'm just interested to see how these online competitions do evolve, because now it's the only thing we, you know, we can do. Well, at the moment, these are so-called, let's say, competitions. It's more like a fundraiser. Mm. And it is for people to get together, be able to support one another, support their favorite place, the gym, their community, right? So it's not so much a uh, a sporting sporting event yes. as so much of a community event. Yeah, that's actually maybe that's a good distinction. I think is actually kind of separating it a little. Like you know, this is an event to support the community mm. as opposed to an event to find the fittest in some in some degree in some yeah um and it's interesting because you know we've been asked to be part of the uh, the united in movement 24 hour live broadcast so actually tomorrow around about this time we'll be going live mm. and they're kind of doing a 24 hour live broadcast and then seven workouts over seven days i believe yes. uh, where each event gets announced um, on their instagram and then I presume, I don't know if you have through, the full week or you have that day to do it. Through Competition Corner. Yeah. Works. I believe you have the full week. Okay. And then you have uh, CrossFit's online competition. Yes. Um, which are doing a slightly different format. They've got one workout per week for three weeks. Yes. Uh, goes through games.crossfit.com, yeah. same platform as uh, for the Open. I assume it's going to be very similar to the Open deadlines as well. I haven't really... Yeah, I haven't um, looked at the the set structure, yeah. but they so oh. with they give donations directly to the box. So yes. you can you can choose you can choose how much you donate from. You can sign up from free to give as much as you. Uh, um, and then you can put that money into the. You can choose which affiliate you want to give that money to. Mm. Which you know it is a very nice idea because, with obviously gym being closed. We expect to see memberships being cancelled because people can't go in. So, you know, you still have to pay rent. You still have to pay your affiliation fee. Um, so all these costs start adding up, um, especially if you're not generating any revenue. Any revenue. Although we see a big shift in owners and coaches bringing their classes from the gym to an online platform like Zoom or Instagram yeah. Live or so forth, where the members or even outside of their community can join in and... Uh, benefit from the from the trainings that has been put online lately which is a fantastic thing but the question is how much a gym can actually support themselves from an online uh, online yeah. class we well i suppose thinking that you know for a month most most of the gym small businesses can kind of you know they can buffer that uh, mm. that period but if we start creeping into two months possibly longer i i, I think you know, not just for gyms, for the whole um, economy, we'll see huge effects. And of course, we would like to encourage everyone to keep paying their membership for as long as they can. But we also have to realize that that at the end of the day, everyone's situation is, or most people's situation, worsens and worsens. And then the first thing you're going to start cutting off is the, let's not call it luxuries, but yeah. the, but your hobbies, your... your um, your outside of work and daily activities. Yeah, you know, I think it's one of those, like if your job, if if you have been in a fortunate position to be like temporarily laid off from your job, mm. you know, finances uh, do become more of a risk and, and scary. It's gonna be hard to pay that monthly membership to your box, Yeah. regardless of how much you like that place. Yeah, it's true. The hope, I know, and I think the hope from everyone is that, you know, everyone can kind of weather that month um, period as it starts to go longer. I. I think people really start to get nervous about what is what the future future will be. Uh, absolutely. So hopefully, you know, these incentives 
do bring about some more support for the the small business owners, the box owners in the, across the world. A hundred percent, and we do hope that it goes directly to them and yes. to their aid. Yes, exactly. Um, have you got anything else that you want to cover? Anything else? Can, uh, yeah, we've seen the situation. <laughs> yeah, especially you know there are some, and I presume like the likes of Amazon um, or home gym equipment from uh, you from know, many the, manufacturers. Yeah, from many manufacturers. That, you know, it's sometimes quite nice. I suppose people who've been meaning to set up a home gym probably for years, but you know, you just never do it. Have now been forced into the position where they've probably made a space where they can train at home. They can get their workout in there, and yeah, they're. A lot of a lot of equipment suppliers have run out of dumbbells, barbells, machines. So it's uh, you know I, I think they've seen a, a big you know, they've obviously seen a big benefit from that regard. Well, we've seen many of those manufacturers truly giving back to the medical community, the community yeah. in general. They doing so much. It's not just they are taking, and uh, they are doing a lot, a lot. And of course, I mean. It's a time if you have the space to set up a home gym, yeah, yeah. like how we did actually. Yeah, we are. Should. We are in our, uh, I suppose, our farm gym yeah. location right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's in essence. So we're seeing like a big shift in the, in the world because of the pandemic, where it's looking likely the twenty twenty season is. Cancelled or, changed in a in a very drastic way. Um, but what we're seeing is a rise of different styles of online competition. Uh, I suppose Rogue, uh, as you say, Italy was actually the first, but then Rogue kind of identifying or moving online. Mm. But now we've seen these more community-based events such as um, United in Movement or uh, CrossFit Zone. Which is great and we'll see. Hopefully these events will help aid the ones in need but future organizers can take inspiration from how these events will run yes. and hopefully organize more sporting event based online comps. Yeah, because I'm sure we'll see like a development of the online, now everyone's mm. focused on it. There'll be a lot of feedback. There's there'd kind of been a set structure for, I suppose since the Open in 2011. Yeah. So for the last pushing 10 years, there's been a set structure. So we may see some shifts or different ideas coming through. Yeah? Yeah. So, we hope you enjoyed the update. We'll be bringing you more videos from the lockdown farm. This is Christoph. Stay safe. I'm John, and we'll be seeing you soon.